Okay, I know the timing of this video isn't the best. Coming off the release of Netflix's live-action Cowboy Bebop series, its subsequent vitriolic backlash, and inevitable cancellation only three weeks after it debuted, it's fair to say that a lot of people on the internet don't take too kindly to live-action adaptations of their favourite anime. And they haven't for a while. From their poor to middling audience and critical reception, to adding to the sobering fact that Hollywood has run out of original ideas, all the while serving as a far inferior version to the original source material, it seems obvious that the prospect of live-action anime, in the grand scheme of things, is completely pointless, right? So why am I here making this video about live-action anime adaptations that I really want to see. Okay, before you start sending in those hate comments, just hear me out first. I'm not saying I wholly support live-action anime adaptations, I'm still kind of on the fence with them myself, but like it or not, it's a very lucrative market right now, both in Hollywood and in Japan's national film and TV industries. With live-action adaptations being announced for series such as One Piece, Naruto, Sword Art Online, and many more, I don't think they'll be going away anytime soon. Also, I think it's worthy to give credit where credit is due here, because while a vast majority of these adaptations are misses, when they do hit, they are actually pretty decent. And that's what I'm hoping for with these anime as well. Deeguid everyone, I'm Irish anime fan, and for this video I'm going to be going over some anime that I think would look really cool in live action. These aren't likely to happen anytime soon, but if I were in the position of pitching these ideas to a boardroom of movie executives, this is how I would go about doing it. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. And hope to Harhi that the blowback to this video will not be brutal. The first anime on my list is Trigun. You might be thinking that I'm only saying Trigun because Netflix Bebop has just come and gone, but even before that was announced, I have felt for a very long time that Trigun would be a great anime to adapt into live action. In fact, I think it would have been better to go with this first rather than Bebop. I understand why they went with Bebop in the end, it's obviously the more popular series out of the two, but it had a lot of challenges going into it. Don't get me wrong, Trigun will have its own set of challenges as well, but it would be far less of a hassle than Bebop. Instead of having to flick back and forth between different locales in space, we have one set location, the desolate no man's land, with nothing but dry deserts and empty ghost towns. This setting is a staple in westerns, which is a genre that's hard to get wrong compared to the sci-fi adventure that Bebop was. But that poses a question in what we choose to do with this information. We can adapt what's there in the anime, or we can take from Badland Rumble's example and create a wholly original story, with some references sprinkled here and there. I think that this would be the best course of action to take, because it gives the audience an idea of what the series is all about, without having to go into lengthy exposition dumps. In my mind, a Trigon live-action adaptation would look like the film Cowboys and Aliens. The only difference is that I would actually make it a good film. In terms of who I would cast in this adaptation, for Vash I have two actors in mind. The one that I think would make the most sense for a lot of people would be Neil Patrick Harris. He will obviously bring the comedic chops needed for Vash's character, but he's also a really good dramatic actor when he's given the chance to show it off. My other choice would be Donald Gleeson. It's a bit of a pipe dream in all honesty, but I feel if he was given a role like this, he would absolutely smash it. For Nicholas D. Wolfwood, I think Adam Driver would be a good pick, solely because I want to see him rock that classic fringe. Also, if Donald Gleeson was attached to this project, I suspect that their banter on and off screen would be really fun. For Meryl, I would cast Mary Elizabeth Winstead because she plays no-nonsense characters really well. Millie was actually pretty difficult to cast, because her character has a very specific criteria, and this has nothing to do with her height or build, but whether or not she can pull off her comedic chops well. I ended up going with Adrienne Palicki, but if you have anyone else in mind for the role, then let me know in the comment section below. And that's my case for a live-action Trigon. Well, it was either that, or a Guardians of the Galaxy-style interpretation of Outlaw Star, but I think it's for the best that Chris Pratt doesn't get his hands on any more beloved properties. What is that man doing? The next entry on this list is Psychopaths. 
I believe Psycho Pass would make for a great live action anime series, so great that I'm surprised that it hasn't been attempted before. The reason why I'm so confident about this is because the groundwork has already been laid out for it. The civil system being imposed on every facet of society, the dominance of technology in everyday life, and the police's moral ambiguity, all of which were inspired by films such as Blade Runner, Minority Report, and LA Confidential. This also proves that even though it's set in Japan, its themes are relevant and universal enough to take place anywhere in the world. I also think that the film industry would have learned from the mistakes of Ghost in the Shell. Say what you want about the quality of that film, and believe me, there are a lot of problems with it, but the visual aspects are really spectacular, and I think a Psycho Pass live action film or TV series will definitely take that on board. In terms of the content, I feel it would be best to focus on the plot of the first season. Much of the reverence of the franchise stems from this season, but depending on its success, you can introduce elements of the series beyond that point if you want. As mentioned before, the anime was inspired by a number of neo-noir and sci-fi films. Any one of them can be a valid point of reference, but the film I was specifically thinking of when adapting this into live action was the film Dread. The film's dingy urban setting, its stylistic presentation, and special effects work makes for a high-octane interpretation that would be incredible to see portrayed on screen. Now, this next entry is going to be from the Fate franchise, because, let's face it, it's one of the most successful franchises to come out of anime. I would be kind of surprised if Hollywood didn't capitalize on Fate eventually, but I can only choose one series to adapt and it has to be something that captures the original essence of fate, so we can exclude all the spin-offs for now. Seeing how Sir Ian McKellen actually gave a dramatic recital of the chant from Unlimited Blade Works a few years ago, a Fate Stay Night live action would be the logical choice, right? However, for as magical as that moment was, I don't think that will happen. At least not yet anyways. As good franchise material as it might potentially be, it's probably still too big of a commitment at this point. So that leaves us with Fate Zero, and what I ultimately think would be the perfect live-action Fate adaptation. The reason being is because while it serves as a prequel to Fate Stay Night, it still manages to be its own contained story. I think the plot of Fate Zero lends itself well to a more structured and serialized format. It would play out similarly to Game of Thrones, but the differences I would make would be to ramp up the fantasy and magic elements and place it in a contemporary setting. The only thing I would be wary about when it comes to this adaptation would be the potential limitations it faces when capturing what the animators at UFO Table brought to the anime. But considering the breadth of high-budget fantasy films of the last decade, it is still in the realm of possibility. Since there are a whole host of players taking part in the Holy Grail War, from masters and servants to other supporting characters, I won't be casting every single character in this video, but here are a couple of suggestions I have. I would cast Aiden Turner as Kiritsugu Emiya and Uwe McGregor as Kirei Kotomine. They're both amazing actors who are well adept at fantasy films and TV. Now my dream pick for who to play Saber would be Charlize Theron because she has proven that she can play badass heroines in action films, so I think her in this role would be amazing. You cannot change my mind on this, no matter how hard you try. A vast majority of the anime that gets adapted into live action are primarily shonen action series. And while it does make sense why that is the case, they are some of the most popular anime of all time, shoujo anime should get some more representation in this department too. There are a number of great titles to choose from, but the one I eventually went for is Snow White with the Red Hair. It was either that or Yona of the Dawn, which would also be great as well. But what gives Snow White the edge for me is because it's simple, but in a good way. It's an innocent fairy tale romance with a grounded setting, meaning it won't require that many special effects, but it has beautiful scenery and it also has a strong, independent female lead character. 
This may not be a direct one-to-one -one comparison that I would use as a reference point myself, but considering the success of Bridgerton, which takes the formula seen in romantic fairy tale esque period dramas with more modern sensibilities, would be something to consider when adapting this into live action. Bridgerton's colorblind casting will also inform the casting decisions that would be made for this live action adaptation, specifically for Shira Yuki's character. Sure, you can cast somebody who has red hair and called a day, but you can take this allegory even further by either casting a person of colour, somebody with a disability, or anybody from a marginalised background. Just actively bring the subtext into the forefront of the text itself. I know that by doing this, this becomes a more loose adaptation, but that's part of the adaptation process as well, and something that I would take advantage of. My final entry on this list is Death Parade. It would be great to see this as a live action series because it's based on a simple yet effective premise. Two deceased people who play a game to decide their fate in the afterlife is a concept that we've seen before, so it wouldn't be difficult to replicate in live action. Seeing how the anime consists of standalone stories, with the occasional dive into the mystery surrounding Quindessum and the identity of the black haired woman, I wouldn't really change the details except expand upon what's already been shown in the anime. Again, this is not a direct comparison I would make, but think of the popularity of something like Squid Game, where it revolves around a similar premise of people playing children's games to avoid certain death. This will definitely incentivize producers to find similar ideas to greenlight in its wake. In terms of the casting, I would have Craig Parkinson play Decim, Brianna Hildenbrand as Nona, and Kelsey Asbel as the black-haired woman. I'm actually really proud of this casting decision because, for starters, they already kind of look like their characters, and also they are great actors who would kill it given the material. Also, Bradio has to be involved in some capacity. I don't care if he does the OP again, or if he has an executive producer credit, just make it happen pretty please. And that does it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button and hit subscribe to be notified of whenever I upload a new video, or follow me on Twitter at IrishAnimeFan for updates and other miscellaneous things that I happen to tweet. Links in the description below. I have been IrishAnimeFan, and until next time, slow on.